it. Amen. Can we just give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. 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 I feel excitement. I feel expectancy in this place today. Amen. 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 Can I get a real big amen? Amen. I'm so excited. We survived. Can we just say that? We survived 2020. Praise the Lord. Y'all better act like y'all happy about that. Amen. Amen. Uh, Karen, where is my image? I just want you to know that some of y'all look like this. He was much skinnier on my, my computer, but he's gained some weight since I guess he ate a little bit of something, something. But some of y'all look like that this year. But now y'all can like shake it off. Can y'all just go ahead and let's shake off 2020? Let's just shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Amen. 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 God is so awesome. And you may be seated. He is so awesome. You know, I have got a word that he has given me. Now it's been six weeks and he just keeps changing it. Every time I get ready, I think I got my whole sermon worked out. Praise the Lord. And literally Saturday, he throws me a big curveball. So, um... What is so awesome about that is that God knows exactly which of you people were going to show up today, and he has a word just for you. Are you so glad about that? Are you excited about the 2021 word? Yes. Amen. I said, are you really excited about it? Y'all ain't looking like that guy out there, are you? Y'all better shake yourself loose now. Come on now. Amen. So, and before I even get into my word today, I just want to thank everybody for the sweet Christmas gifts and the cards. It was so, so uh, sweet to me and such a blessing to me, and I appreciate it huge. Um, and I just, I just have to say, Michelle sent me something even on New Year's Eve, and she had no idea that that phrase had already been dropped into my spirit because one of the phrases she said she was encouraging me and in the middle of that she said I just keep hearing this phrase mama I keep hearing the Lord speak and say I'm gonna blow your mind I am gonna blow your mind this year amen and I think that that's gonna be in a positive because we already had it blown in the negative are we right about that <laughs> Don't need no more mind blowing in the negative. Don't need to look like that no more. We need to do a makeover on 2020. Amen? Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Now let's get to it. Y'all ready for the word? Let's get to the entree. Amen? Amen. And welcome all of you from Facebook. I am so glad you are joining us live via Facebook stream. And I want you to go right now and share this feed. Somebody needs this 2021. Let's get it on out of here in 2020 and make it something big for the 2021 year. Y'all ready to get that first word? Y'all ready? Well, let's do that. So what I'm going to speak to you today is my title is God's About to Blow Your Mind. Everybody just go, Poof. Poof. amen, amen. Um, so that's right, all right. Now, y'all excited, I feel you. Um, I want you to reach over, well, just holler. Holler at your neighbor right now. Turn around and tell them. Holler at them real loud. Say, hey, neighbor, God's about to blow your mind. Get ready. God's about to blow your mind. Now I want you to look up to the heavens above, and I want you to tell the Lord loud and clear. Tell him, God, I'm ready. For you to blow my mind in 2021. Amen. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. So let me ask you, do you really mean what you said? Because before you receive a breakthrough and a mind-blowing blessing, uh, let me just tell you, heads up here, you're going to receive a mind-blown uh, breakdown. Can I just say it that way? And some of y'all can amen me real loud because you know that's the truth, right? Just like in the story of Job, in one day, one day, he lost all of his wealth. In one day, as if that wasn't bad enough, because he's very wealthy, in one day, he, he went bankrupt. In one day, he lost his entire family, his children. Well, God spared the wife who could remind him of everything, right? But he lost his children in one day. This is all like, you think it can't get any worse? Well, yeah, it can. It can get worse. There's always a worse, right? So in the same the chapter, the book that we read, there are 41 chapters of warfare going from bad to worse. But in chapter 42, oh, and I don't know about you, but I'm ready for my 42. Amen? I'm ready for my 42 in 2021. I am ready, Lord. I'm ready. 
And we see in chapter 42 that God blessed him with double. He turned it around. He flipped the script just like that. Just like that. Just as quickly as he lost. In just a moment, God flipped it. And God did some things that was so miraculous that everybody around him said, Wow, Job is really blessed. Job is really favored. Look what God did. So hindsight is 2020, and I can say literally, looking back on this year, it is 2020 hindsight, right? Um, it went from bad to worse, from a pandemic to racial strife, and we saw a lot of things, even personal, but it has divided this country. Um, I saw churches shut down. I saw churches scatter and shatter into a million pieces. And the enemy's ultimate goal, I want you to hear me on this, is always the ultimate, the end result was what? Steal, kill, and destroy. The end result is always division that leads to destruction and devastation. And if he can scatter, come on now, scatter and separate the church from one another and isolate you, I'm talking about you now. If he can isolate you, then he can work on your, on your mind. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, through 10. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 10. Be well balanced in all ways. How often? Always, always alert. Y'all going to help me this morning, right? Because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly. That means he don't ever quit. He don't ever sleep. He don't ever get tired. He roams around like a roaring lion looking for its prey to devour. Number nine, verse nine. Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. For you know that your believing brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kind of trouble you endure. Verse 10. And then, and then, I love this part, and then, after your brief, so, now, don't feel brief when you're going through it, does it? It feels like it's never going to end. But after then, after, after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will personally, whew, personally, that, hey, God's showing up for you and you don't even know it right now. I said, God personally is taking care of business for you. Personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger. How? Than ever before. Stronger than ever before. Yes, he will set you firmly in place and build you up. Mm -mm -mm. But first you're going to have a breakdown. Can I just say that? Amen. The implication in the context on verse 9 is that if you do not bring your worries and cares to God, y'all hear me today, the devil will use depression and discouragement to devour you. Just as lions go after the feeble, the young, and the stragglers, so the enemy of our souls will always seek out those who are isolated and alone or depressed to devour them. Now, I might have just described some things that you were even going through, okay? So let this be an encouragement to you that God's going to turn some things around. He's turning it right now. He works on your mind. The enemy works on your mind by intimidation because he paints these pictures, right? Y'all have heard me teach on that, the doom and gloom, the pictures. He uses your imagination to paint vividly with his brush that curses everything in your world because he wants to intimidate you. And if you keep looking... Mm. at the condition of the world and if you keep listening to the report of the media come on now the enemy will hijack your faith and begin to manipulate you with F-E-A-R fear he wants you to believe his report over the report of the Lord his report is always filled with fear and doubt and confusion, chaos, amen, everything negative you can name right there. You can't believe the report of the enemy and also believe the report of the Lord. Can I get an amen right there? I'm going to say that one more time. You can't believe two reports at one time. 
Amen. You can't believe the report of the enemy and believe the report of the Lord. You're going to choose one and your mind will be set in the direction of that report. There's a reason the original families did not go into their promised land. Y'all remember I, pro I preached about the Israelites? Y'all remember that? Okay. So the original families, the reason they didn't go into the promise, I know y'all remember this, it's because they believe the report of the ten negative spies instead of the report of the two who believed God's report and stood faithful and stood on it. The enemy will send misinformation to you, and he's probably done it this week. I can guarantee you he has because he is such a good liar. Okay, he's very convincing. So he will send misinformation to you and cause you to doubt the very promises of God because you might think it, but then you start feeling it, right? Then you start, you don't know what happened to you, but all of a sudden you feel like, I, I just don't know. I, I don't know, God, can you? God, did you say that? I don't know anymore because I feel like I'm not victorious. I feel defeated. I feel like it ain't going to be good. I feel like I'm going to get COVID and die. I feel, but the devil is a liar. I said he is a liar. The naysayer spies brought back a report that talked about their strength. They focused on their capability, their strength, and what they were capable of doing. But Joshua and Caleb said, yes, there are giants in the land, but God... I said, but God said the land belongs to us. So it don't matter what your report says. It don't matter that it was the majority that came back and said their opinion of what they saw and if they could take the land. God has already spoken even to some of you in this place. And because you've allowed the naysayers that the enemy has sent into your life with their negative report of lack of doom and gloom and limitation... You have believed their report and forgotten the report of the Lord. They stayed focused on God's report and they had to do this. All they had to do, everybody, to walk on in was just believe his promise to them and walk in it. Amen. We have two gates that access our minds. Do y'all know what that is? Point to your eye. It's the eye gate and the ear gate, eye gate and ear gate. So what you let pass through those two gates goes right here, right here, right here. And you begin to believe it, whether it's true or not, you've allowed yourself because you've allowed the enemy access. Y'all better hear me today. Y'all allowed the access to the enemy to go right here and tell you exactly what your future holds. And you have believed a lie. And the thoughts you believe determine the kind of life you're going to live. Because you're going to actually act it out. You're going to walk it out. Now, it might not be the will of God. But because you believed, I said because you believed the report of the enemy, even if it's a lie, you're going to go ahead and manifest it. That's how powerful you are. Do you understand what I just told you? See, you can walk into the truth or you can walk headfirst into a lie. It is totally up to you what you believe. So all of those who listened and believed the negative reports were cursed to wander. And some of you have been cursed to wander and have been wandering for years and years after the wrong man, <clears throat> after the wrong woman. <clears throat> that ain't COVID, baby. That's just me telling you that's an uh-huh. Y'all have been wandering after the wrong thing because it looked and it felt good to you. Not in the Holy Spirit, but into your flesh. And because you felt like it was a good thing or the truth, you followed after it even though it was against the Word of God. Contrary to the purpose. Not getting you one step closer to the purpose and promise of what God spoke over you. You have chased a dream. You have chased a mirage. You have chased a fantasy and a lie of the enemy. Amen? Amen? I don't want to step on your toes, but I feel some people not want to holler out, ouch, real good. But uh, I feel you this morning. I feel you. I can look at your face, remember. All of those who listened and believed those negative reports died in the wilderness. They didn't even go into the promise. Now, it doesn't mean that God did not give them the promise. It means that they chose 
to believe a negative report. They chose to believe that God did not mean what he said. So as the spies and the lies of those spies um, brought negativity, brought doubt, there were some that believed the report of the Lord, and they trusted God, and they believed that he was faithful to complete and bring his word to pass, and they just kept walking. They just kept walking. And if you are believing God for the mind-blowing breakthrough blessing, you better know there's going to be mind-blowing, mind-blown obstacles standing in the way, trying to stop you and intimidate you and keep you from walking in your promise. If the enemy can get you going in the backwards motion or get you just to set your butt down and quit and give up, he's got you. The question I want to pose to you is not how big the giants are on your land. The question I want to pose to you is why are they standing there in the first place? Because you let them there, right? You let them in. The moment you forget who you are and whose you are is the moment you forget how great your God is. Praise God. This is building my faith right now. I have read over this and just it has really encouraged me. It's like the breath of the Holy Spirit breathing in me. And I want that same breath of God to breathe into you with his word, his promise. See, you need to get in the word every day. And you need to educate yourself on how you can defeat the enemy and how to equip yourself for battle. Because, baby, whether you believe it or not, there is spiritual warfare going on all around you all the time, every day, all day. Every day, all day. So if you want to stick your head in the sand and pretend that nothing's going on, if you want to just keep watching your show on Netflix... If you want to just stay oblivious to the spiritual application and the things that are going on around you, even though they're affecting you in your life, in your world, you stick your head back in the sand, or can I say it this way, back into your computer with whatever game you're playing or fantasy world you're living in or social media or whatever. And it's funny to me, it's funny to me that there are many people, many of you, I'm not pointing fingers, I'm going to let Jesus do that, There are many of you who'll spend those hours wasting away, not feeding your faith, not building your faith up, not knowing who you are and what your rights are as a child of God. You won't spend 10 minutes reading your Bible or 15 minutes praying. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. While you're busy being distracted, the enemy is creeping around your house. And he is walking through unlocked doors, baby, that you left open. He is climbing through windows that you left lifted up. He ain't even having to work real hard because you've done the work for him. Do you hear me? So he is stealing your finances. He is killing your peace. He is destroying your marriage and your children. And you are oblivious. Oblivious because you, you're not spiritual minded. You got your mind down here and not up here. Just because you're oblivious doesn't mean that the spiritual warfare is going to stop being waged all around you. It's out to destroy you. I said he is out to destroy you. So it doesn't mean it doesn't exist because you don't see it or don't want to see it. There are some of you about to have a nervous breakdown because you have believed the lie of the enemy. Because you thought what God said would have happened by now. God does not take orders from any man. He ain't stressing, baby, today about COVID. He ain't worried about the stock market. He's not intimidated by the enemy. He does not operate in lack, even if you do. You don't understand you're simply in the process of God doing what he said he would do. It has to look impossible for man before God can show up. So no one and nothing... Can get the glory but him. Amen? Amen. The process never looks like the finished product. Tell somebody, say, it ain't going to look like it. It ain't going to look like it. It ain't going to look like it. Don't get discouraged, honey. Don't get discouraged. Amen? Be encouraged. Let me remind you, he that began a good work. I love this. Is faithful. Who is? I am. No, no, I'm not the one that is going to complete the work. He is faithful. Faithful. 
to complete it and finish it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But he will bring it to pass in his way and in his time. And that's the part I hate. But like Joseph, like Joseph, he might show you his promise for your life. Hmm. But he's not going to show you the pit in the prison you're going to have to go through to get to the promise. Amen? Amen. Because a lot of us will give up before we even get on the road to go there. Like Sarah, he might tell you you're going to have a baby. Because you prayed for the whole life. And when you're ready, you're already past childbearing years, so it's already impossible. But God's not going to do it right then. You know, you think, okay, nine months later, I'm going to have this little baby, right? Uh Uh-uh. He waited 26 years. 26 more years. She's already in the impossible zone. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? So some of you have looked at something, and y'all were already in the impossible zone before God gave you the promise. But now it's been five years later. It's been 10 years later. It's been 26 years later. And you feel like, maybe I heard you wrong, God. Maybe you're not going to do what I thought you said you were going to do. But I want you to know something. (laughs) Your delay is not your denial. Amen? That ain't cliche, baby. That's truth today. Hashtag, your delay is not a denial. See, God often starts something, and you will have in your mind, because you know we're like this, right? We can't see up here. You know, that same God hung the stars up, Pastor Moses. He hung the moon up, Pastor Clifford. All those years ago, and he is sitting there saying, just shine. Eons ago, right? He ain't had to talk two times. Some of you are waiting, because you know you're used to your mama saying, don't do that, I'm going to spank you. Don't do that. I said, don't do that. Don't do that. One more warning. God don't have to repeat himself. Because once he speaks it, Pastor Danny, it begins to come into activation. It begins to come to life. Because every word out of his mouth is the breath of creation. The breath of a holy God saying, let there be. Whew, my God. Mm. So God often starts something. And you will have in your mind how you think think it's going to do it and how he how he's going to do it how long it's going to take let me encourage you in this what makes your daddy my daddy our daddy so incredibly awesome is how he stands at the beginning with you when he whispers his promise in your ear but he is also at the very same time standing at the very end at the completion of it he's already waiting on it all you got to do is just keep walking You ain't walking by yourself. You might feel like it, but you're not. He's standing with you. He's walking with you. And on the other side of this, there's the finish line. There's the beautiful promise. Amen? When you let go and you quit trying to help God and get the heck out of his way, then he can work. See, a lot of times you get in your own way. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? You get in your own way. You're like, "What what in the world are you thinking? Get out of the way. Let God have his way. Let go of the frustration. Let go of the feeling that you have to make it come to pass. You just have to be obedient and keep walking. And keep moving forward. Trusting God. Trusting the process. Trusting his timing. And then eventually you will get to the other side. Many of you in this place today and many of you watching today can testify. You can testify to this fact. What you thought would kill you. Where you thought you would die has only made you stronger. I said it's only made you stronger because it revealed the strength that was inside of you all along. Amen, amen. So the big picture, you don't even see it right now because we only see a pixel, right? But God has got some awesome things planned even for this year. See, I think a lot of us don't understand, and this is not in my notes, but I just want to say this. I think a lot of us don't understand the power that we we possess as children of God, as daughters and sons of Abraham. See, the same creator, you have that same ability to create. And because you don't speak anything, well, you might. You might be speaking the negative. You might be tearing things up and you don't even know you're doing it. You're cursing things in your life and you don't even know you're doing it. You're cursing your finances. You're cursing your body. You're cursing your life that God has given you, your job, your blessings. 
you're cursing it because you're constantly speaking with the breath of God that's inside of you. You're always speaking limitation and lack. You're always talking about how it can't happen, what it ain't going to do, what's not going to be this way or that way. You're trying to lean on your own understanding instead of leaning on what God has said because his ways are what? Higher than your ways. Amen. Put your hands together this morning for that. Amen. Thank you, Father. You may think that who the president is or who he ain't is going to keep you held back from whatever your promise is. You may think COVID restrictions is going to keep you restricted where you cannot start that business, where you cannot get that degree, where you cannot pursue the dream that God has placed inside of you. But I want you to know that God ain't stressing today about COVID. He ain't intimidated by the enemy. He don't operate in any of those boundaries. Amen. Aren't you glad about that? He's still Jehovah Jireh. His name ain't changed just because the economy has. His name don't change with the culture. His name don't change because you're going through something today. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So why are you worried, my child? Why are you worried? Why are you fretting? Amen. See, here's the thing. If you're raised in lack, if you're raised where you, you struggled, if you're raised where you were not blessed, if you're raised in that, it affects your mentality because you grow up and you think, I can't expect great things because I don't want to be disappointed, right? Right? Because if you raise your expectations and it don't happen, then you feel like, well, either something was wrong with you for thinking too high or you just don't deserve it you got to earn it. So it's kept you from asking for anything, anything, not something, anything. But God wants to bless you. You know, I'm not just up here saying some things. I've got scripture to back up everything I'm saying. So y'all ready for some more? You have not because you, have you asked him for it? Have you asked him for it? And not just asked him for it, have you visualized it? You know, did you just ask and pray one night while you're laying in your bed? Just kind of a, a whisper, pray, oh, Lord, I just, you know, oh, do, do this for me. You know, can I have a, a raise? Please, 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 sir. Please, sir, can you please? I don't want to bother you, but could you please do this for me? Could you please work it out for me? That's how a lot of you see yourself. See, you're not seeing yourself as a true child of the king, or you just walk on up and get in your daddy's lap and say, Daddy, can I please have a... He's like, Baby, yeah, I own a thousand, a cattle on a thousand hills. You can have anything you want. All you have to do is... All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. And ask in faith. Because if you believe he's able... Do you, if you believe that he's capable, not you, not you, baby. You ain't capable of earning nothing, not even salvation. But if you believe he is, then you can ask in boldness. Matthew 7, 8 through 11 says, For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who asks, what? Some people, everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be. Now, I didn't see anything up there that said, well, sometimes. Well, you got to meet these qualifications. It literally says everyone. Do you all understand? That's like you, Sean. That's you, Janice. That's you, Danny. That, that's you, Tanya. I, I could go down the row. If you are a child of God, I just read your promise right there. I said I read your promise right there. Everyone who asks receives. Verse 9. I love this. I love this. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a plate full of stones? Do you? Do you give them a stone and say, go chew on this? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Mm -mm, of course not. Verse 11. So if you sinful people... That means you ain't good enough right there. Y'all better check that. Y'all better highlight that. So if you sinful people, because you're thinking about how bad you are, how you always messing up, you're still his baby. You're still his baby. You ain't perfect. I'm not perfect. He is. Amen? He is. 
So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more with your heavenly Father give? What, what kind of gifts? Turn around and tell your neighbor, he wants to bless you good, real good, to those who ask him. But first you got to do what? That's right, to those who ask him. But if you're not asking, you ain't getting. Ephesians 3, 20 through 21. Never doubt, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest, come on, greatest request. Your most unbelievable dream. Y'all, I'm reading the word of God right here for you. Y'all need to be praying this every day. Never doubt my God, my, my daddy, my father's mighty power to work in me and accomplish all of this. I'm going to read it this way. Can I, y'all, y'all just excuse me. I'm going to talk to me right now while y'all talk to yourself, okay? He will achieve. He will achieve infinitely more than my greatest request, my most unbelievable, unimaginable, unattainable dream, and exceed my wildest imagination. He will, I love it, I underlined it. Y'all better say it loud. He will what? Outdo them all. For his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Woo! Woo! I need Brittany up here doing a little praise the praise dance, written. Let me read it in the, in the, the uh, translation that we all know. This is the NIV. This is the same scripture. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power, not my power, his power that is at work within me. When you get home today, I want you to do something, okay? Y'all know I love giving y'all little assignments. So here's y'all an assignment. Giving y'all some throwback to uh, school. But this is the school of the kingdom. Y'all ready for this? Okay. Okay. When you get home today, I want you to take a piece of paper. Post-it notes, whatever you want to do. And I want you to write down, because I bet you, most of you, now if you have, I want to see your hand, because I'll be impressed. But most of you probably haven't even written down what you expect to manifest this year. Have you, has anybody done that yet? Y'all wrote it down? Oh, hold on just a minute, babies. I, mama proud of y'all today. Y'all learning? Y'all learn? But the other people, y'all gonna learn. Y'all gonna learn. So you need to write down, and I'm talking about be descriptive in the slightest, every little detail, minute detail. Write it down. Put it where you are gonna see it. I don't care if you do this 10 times. Ten different pages hanging in ten different places. Put one in your car. Put one at work. Put one on your mirror. Put it by your bed. Put it in your Bible. Write it down in description detail. And I want you every day as you pray, I want you to praise him for that in advance. I want you to give him a praise on credit for what's coming. Do you hear me? I want you to praise him and and read it out loud. I don't care if it's a figure, baby. You can't ask for a $1,000 raise a month if you can't even say it out loud and you get in there and say, uh, 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 sir, please, uh. No, you have to be so comfortable saying, I'm going to make 5000 a month. I'm going to make this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to look like, it's going to look like this. But if you can't even say that out loud where you begin to hear it, remember what's the gate? Ear, what's the gate? Right, and then your mind follows that because you live the life that you see and believe. So the moment you begin to believe those and you pray that and you claim it and you put your hand on that and you read it out loud and say, God, I just praise you. I praise you right now for X, Y, Z. Read it. Amen? Amen. Several times a day. Amen. I can't wait. I'm excited for y'all to see what God's going to do and manifest in your life. This is going to change your life today because you're doing what God has created you to do. Now, whatever you're thinking about, I want you to elevate and expect it. Raise your mind. If you had it right here, baby, raise the bar. Because as long as it's right here and you say, oh, well, that's doable, then it ain't God. He wants you to expect the unexpected. He wants to blow your mind because he is a mind-blowing God. 
He is an awesome father. You are so mighty, God. Do y'all feel that even right now? He is mighty. Can we just take just a minute right here? God, you are mighty. You are powerful. You are awesome. You are holy. You are miraculous. You are mighty. There ain't nothing too hard for you, God. There ain't nothing too hard for you, God. There ain't nothing too hard for you, God. Thank you, Father. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Did y'all feel that? Did y'all feel that? I got gooseies. Did y'all feel that? Do you understand? That's the power of your word. Did y'all see that? That is the power of your word. You said it. Your mom believed it. He is mighty. There ain't nothing too hard for my daddy. He is a mighty God. He is a holy God. He wants to bless me with good things. Amen? His ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts for you are higher than what you already have in your mind. Tell somebody, just holler out at them. Tell them it's going to be so much greater than what you've imagined and what you dreamed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm about to close right here. See, you may not understand what you've been going through and why you've been going through it, but I want to tell you this. Just keep walking. I said, can you just keep walking? Bella, just keep walking, baby. Just keep prophesying. Just keep praying it. Just keep believing. Whew, my God, if that camera wasn't on me, I'd jump down and just start running. I'd run. I'd be breathing hard when I come back. I ain't in shape. That's one of my resolutions. You may not understand it. It may not look like what you imagined, but just keep walking. Just keep believing it. Keep trusting God is going to bring you through it. You don't feel like praising, it don't matter. A praise ain't how you feel. A praise ain't because your hands are clean or because you didn't fail or because you didn't take a drink or you didn't take a hit. It ain't about your goodness. It said lift up holy hands. Why are they holy? Because he, he is holy. And anytime you praise the Lord, if a rock's going to cry out and a rock ain't done nothing, you're his baby. He's waiting on your voice to cry out and say, God, I believe, Daddy, I believe it. Daddy, I believe you got great things. Daddy, I know you love me. Some of you have to say that because a lot of you have never even been told that, and so you feel unlovable. You feel like you're not good enough to be blessed. When he died for you, just like he died for Seth Hanchy, just like he died for Michelle, it ain't about your gifting. It's about you're his baby. He wants to bless you with good things. He wants to blow your mind. He wants to manifest his purpose in you and through you in 2021 are you ready for that get up on your feet right now and let's just give the lord just such a loud praise and i want amen amen yes lord yes 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 Lord, I praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You were so close to giving up. You were so close to not coming today. You were so close to not hearing this word because the enemy tried to stop it. But the Lord wants you to know that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask, all you can think, all you can dream, all you can imagine. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, we're going to close like this. I want you one more time. Shake it off. Shake it off, baby. Shake off all the negativity, all of the bad report, everything that the doctor said, everything that your job said, everything the media said, everything your mama said, your daddy said, your auntie said. Shake it off. Hey. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. 
See, I don't know about you, but I'm running into the new year. See, I don't know about you, but I ran out of the new year. I mean, oh, you're into the new year. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't even know how to close this. I feel like shout, if I just had an organ, y'all, I would tear this place up. Woo, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, put us on some happy praise music. Praise the Lord. Are y'all ready to seize Carpe Diem 2021? Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all make sure you share. And if you are not a child of God, if you are lost and away from God, I want to give you this opportunity right now. You're watching on purpose. Nothing is an accident. God ordered your steps. He ordered your eyes and your ears to hear this word of faith today, to quicken something inside of you so that you stand back up and you get up and you keep on walking. And if you've turned around the other way and turned your back on God, baby, it's just this simple turn around. Just turn around. Just turn around. You ain't got to fix nothing. You ain't got to clean yourself up. You ain't got to stop drinking. You ain't got to stop cursing. You ain't Because you can't do it by yourself. We need him. And just the fact that he is reaching for you lets you know he loves you. He ain't gave up on you. It don't matter who gave up on you. It don't matter if you gave up on yourself, baby. Get back up. Get back up. Pray this prayer with me right now. Father, I'm turning it around right now. I'm turning my life around. I'm doing a U-turn. Doing a U-turn and I'm running after you, God. Forgive me for failing you. Forgive me, God, for walking away from you. Forgive me, Lord, for every sin I've ever committed, God. Everything I've said, everything I've done. And, Father, I run to your arms. I run into your nail-scarred arms right now, God. And I thank you, Lord, for just loving me up, God. I need to be loved up, Father. I ain't felt love in a long time, God. I thank you for covering me, God. Covering me with your blood. Covering me with your mercy, God. And I give you the honor. I give you the glory. I give you my testimony in all of me, God. In Jesus' name, you are Lord of my life as of today. First Sunday of the year. Can I get an amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll see y'all next Sunday. Put your hands together. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Redemption Power Church in Monroe, Louisiana. If you were blessed today by this service and by this feed, I want you to share the feed, but also reach out to us. We want to know that you were blessed today and how God moved in your life. We believe in prayer. We believe that God sees you. He hears you right where you are. And we know that God is doing some awesome things. If you have prayed the prayer of salvation today, please let us know so that we can send you some vital information to help you grow grow and mature in the Lord and in your walk with the Lord. So thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for being faithful in his tithe and your offering during this time. Thank you for giving and continuing to give even those of you who are being blessed via live stream. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. It is by your love and your commitment to giving that we are able to reach and do the things that we do in ministry, which is like working with the homeless. And we just thank you so much again for being faithful.